In this video, I'm going to give an overview of the dashboard that we'll be creating in my analytics dashboard seminar. It's a three-day seminar offered in different cities. If you want to learn more, you can go to bit.ly forward slash sexy hyphen dashboard. So this video is promotional. If you're hoping to learn something, you're probably not going to learn a whole lot. So you might want to move on. Having said that, let me explain a couple of things. So attendees for this seminar will actually walk away with two different dashboards. One will be a dashboard we create using the free Google Analytics API tool called Exxon Analytics. One thing to keep in mind with Exxon Analytics is it's free. So it hasn't been updated in several years, so a lot of the new functionalities that Google Analytics has added to its interface and subsequently its API aren't available. So the further we go along, the less useful it's going to be. But you'll see the dashboard that we will create using the Exxon Analytics API. Then where you see AC, that doesn't stand for Annie Cushing. It actually stands for Analytics Canvas, which is my favorite API tool. It has a lot of bells and whistles. It gives you the ability to add in data from Google Spreadsheets, which no other dashboard tool does that I'm aware of, including Tableau, Chartio, ones like that. And that, oddly enough, is actually what told me on the Analytics Canvas because as marketers, we love to keep data in Google Spreadsheets. So this chart over here is actually pulled in from a Google Spreadsheet. And I'll get into the specifics. The other thing that I think absolutely is critical as a marketer is Analytics Canvas pulls in data from the Multi-Channel Funnels API. And that's what we'll be looking at over here. Critical, critical, critical. OK, so let's zoom in a bit. I'm just going to give you a fast and furious introduction to these different elements. So what you'll see in this upper left-hand corner is a scorecard. These are very popular in dashboards. And I'll show you how to create one of these, show you how to customize it to your branding. And that's actually something that I want to point out with both of the dashboards. Notice how each of the charts in these dashboards use the same colors, and they align with my branding. So what I do is I take my branded colors, I dial back the opacity a bit, because you don't want lots and lots of bright colors uh, screaming out from your dashboard, because it can be very distracting and stressful to viewers of your dashboard. That's one of the most common mistakes that I see. I guess you can't really call it a mistake, because there are no black and white rules when building out dashboards. But I do like to use muted colors because it just causes everything to blend. But one thing that I'll demonstrate in this course is how to create branded templates that you can use not just for your dashboards, but for all of your visualizations. So I've worked for several different agencies. And typically what happens is every marketer in the agency has their own proclivities for formatting. And their clients get completely different formatted Excel charts and, and graphs and tables depending on that individual marketer's preferences. When in reality, what you should do is build out Excel templates that you can use for all of your visualizations. So if you're in-house, you should be using visualizations with your company's branding. And you can share those across a network so that everyone uses that particular template. So I'll be demonstrating how to do that. And then over here, getting back to this executive overview, you can see I have some high-level metrics. I showed the past 12 months and then the, the previous month with the year-over-year -year percent delta. And I'll show you how to use conditional formatting, like we have here, to cause data to pop out without being garish. So in this historical overview that we see here, you'll notice this is the same data that we have up here, just using an interactive chart. And on the third day of the seminar, I'll teach attendees how to create interactive charts using checkboxes like we see here, radio buttons like we see here, and drop downs like we see over here, as well as scroll bars, which we also see here. So what this allows you to do is you cherry pick which metrics you want to see at any one particular time. So you can get as crazy as you want with this and display all of them or pick and choose what you want. Now down here, we also have a scroll bar, which allows you to show a lot of historical data in one concentrated chart. 
The social media chart, as I mentioned before, pulls data from a Google spreadsheet. What one particular client did was compile visit data in a Google spreadsheet from both social campaigns and social referrals, and then we pulled that in. And what you'll see here is a radio button that allows you to add in month over month percent delta or the year over year or neither for a simplified chart. Now with Google Analytics new panels report, you can actually compile all of that right in Google Analytics. It's one of the things that I especially love about Analytics Canvas because you can actually compile all of that right inside of Analytics Canvas. You set up the rules once and then each month these will be updated using your specific rules. So you actually don't need Google Spreadsheets anymore to compile that data. But I wanted to use it just to show, one, how you can pull in data from a Google Spreadsheet, and two, how you can use radio buttons to add some interactivity to this chart. OK, so just to the east here, now we see data from marketing channels. This is just using the medium dimension from the API. And you can see the data displayed in different ways. This is just using a combination chart. It's not an interactive chart. It's one of my favorite charts, and I use them a lot in Excel. Again, it's just like interactive charts. It's a great way to shoehorn quite a bit of data without it being distracting. And you can see in my charts, I tend to be pretty spartan in the design. I don't like a lot of distraction. And then down here, this is taking visits by medium and displaying them over the past 12 months, which I think is really important to do in a dashboard. OK, moving on to top 10 reports. So what I like to do in dashboards is add a number of top 10 reports. I just chose landing pages, metros, and referrals. You can choose whatever is important to your company. One thing to note right off the bat is metros is a newer dimension. I love this dimension, especially if you're doing PPC. You should absolutely be using the Metro's dimension. In Excellent Analytics, because it's not being updated, you don't have the Metro's dimension, which is sad. So I just use the city's dimension. The reason I think the Metro's dimension is far superior is that in any particular Metro, you may have 20 plus cities. And the city's dimension is going to break down each of those cities whereas the metrics dimension compiles it all, which is really nice. So one thing to note here is you'll notice that I'm also using some conditional formatting to make the data pop a bit. So under the revenue column, you can see I'm using pretty standard data bars. Under bounce rate, I'm actually using yellow flags to mark any bounce rate that's greater than 40%, and red flags to mark any data that's greater than 60%. And what I highly recommend doing, which I'll also demonstrate, is how to add comments to add annotations to your dashboard. So for each section of your dashboard, I, I highly recommend having comments. Now, by default, what Google Analytics will do is add green flags for each bounce rate that's under 40%. That adds a lot of noise. So I'll demonstrate how to use a hack to get rid of the green flags or any other symbol that you're using in conditional formatting to keep things as clean and non-distracting as possible so that only the data that you really want to stand out will stand out. OK, so moving forward, let's talk a little bit about the multi-channel funnels report. As I mentioned earlier, I just absolutely adore the multi-channel funnel API. This is a separate API from the core API, Analytics Canvas. I'm not a salesperson for them, but their tool allows you to choose between the or API, which is where all this data came from, or the multi-channel funnels API. So I also take this opportunity to demonstrate how to use a dropdown to cause your chart to update. So over here, you can see a dropdown that allows the viewer to choose between last-click interactions, first-click interactions, and assist. And this is revenue data here. And this is using the channels report, which is available in the API using Analytics Canvas, not the free tool. Uh, so these aren't mediums. These are actual channels. And you actually have some control over these channels, which is really nice. So here, if I choose first click, you'll see the revenue broken down by first click interaction. And this breaks down all assists. Now, with this particular client that I used to create this template, their data is a little unusual. 
usually what you see is that one particular channel will do really well in, let's say, first click interaction, but not so well in last click. A lot of times, social media marketing is good for that. You'll see social media really perform well in first click or assist, but not so much in last click. And that's because a lot of times social media introduces people to your brand. In this particular case, they're not doing as much as they could be with social. All right, and then finally, this is my absolute favorite chart in this entire dashboard, and this is why. What I did here is I showed revenue by all last click interactions. This is broken down by marketing channel, not medium. There is a difference, and I'll explain the difference between those in the seminar. But typically, this is what most marketers are reporting on, and that's a data travesty. And you're leaving money on the table that you should be taking credit for. In fact, I did an entire presentation at Search Love last year talking about this very issue. So you can see here that when we add in the revenue for all assists, so this is telling you organic search generated $110,000 and some change when it was the last click interaction. But when you add in all of the times that organic assisted in what became a conversion, it actually jumps up to 165000 almost. One thing to note here, though, is that uh, at the time of this recording, unfortunately, the API only pulls in the last 30 months. So you don't get that 90-day look-back window like you get in the interface. I do hope that they update that soon because I think that's an oversight on Google's part. But all in due time. That said, this is still a whole lot better than just reporting on this. One last thing to note here is Excel doesn't give you this functionality by default. This is the result of a hack, which I'll be demonstrating in the seminar. So one thing to note here is that although we'll be applying these data visualization techniques to Google Analytics API data, you can apply this toward any marketing data. And as marketers, we do deal with a crap ton of data that typically is spit out in a hideous format like this. Almost all tools generate data in this kind of database-esque format. And so the tools that you'll be learning in building out this dashboard, you'll be able to apply toward any data visualization that you need to do as a marketer. So again, if you'd like to learn more, go to bit.ly forward slash sexy hyphen dashboards. I hope to see you there.